Hey, what's going on folks? It's Mike here and welcome to the next lesson in our modern C++ series. In today's lesson, we're going to continue talking about the standard template library, but this time talking about something known as a string view. Now, a string view is related to strings, which we've learned about previously in this series, but it has to do with giving us an optimized way for when we just want to read into a string or perhaps display some of the characters in a string and so on. So with that said, let's go ahead and do a quick refresher on strings and then go ahead and see how string view is going to help us write better code. All right, so let's go ahead to CPP reference here. Just go ahead and click on basic string. And just as a reminder, here's our basic string. And usually we're most familiar with the standard string, which is just a templated version with character. And of course, there's different types of characters depending on the type of character set that you're working with. Sometimes you might need two bytes, for instance, to represent some character of text. Now, what we really want to think about with strings today is a little bit of optimization and how the standard template library provides something called string view that'll help us work with strings in a more efficient way. But in order to understand this, we need to look a little bit into what a string really is or how it's represented. And we can kind of dig into this a little bit in the documentation with just a few hints of what's going on, and then I'll illustrate it so it makes a little bit more sense. The first thing that I want you to notice is that there is some memory allocation going on with the string. That sort of makes sense. So let me kind of illustrate this as I highlight again in CPP reference what's going on. So somewhere you can imagine having a class called string. Of course, we know this is called basic string and a templated version with character is what this string is. But again, this is just for illustrative purpose. And it's saying that, well, we need some sort of allocation here. OK, so if I go ahead and look down at this next paragraph, it says the elements of a basic string are stored contiguously. So that means that there's some sort of array down here. So I don't know what we want to call this, but maybe something like characters. And this would be a member function of our string here. Now, we need to think about this a little bit, because would we just guess that, you know, 100 characters is enough for our data inside of this string? Well. Of course not, right? We have strings of many different lengths. So what ends up happening is you most likely have these characters here. And let me try to write it out appropriately. And again, if I, uh, you know, string is a specific instance where we're using just character here, we have some pointer here to our uh, string data here. Let me kind of write this out. M string data. And this eventually needs to be initialized somewhere. That means we need to make some sort of allocation here using new and then eventually using delete. And as we perform different operations on a string, we might append to the string and have to resize the contents of this memory. But that's the basic idea. We know that we have to hold on to these contents here and we might have to do dynamic memory allocation. Okay. Now, why is this a problem or why are we going to learn about string view? Well, let's just go ahead and look at string here. And uh, let's just go ahead and make sure to include our header and take a look at some strings here. And we might have a uh, string like this, s equals, this is some really uh, long string here. And you can imagine that, again, we have strings of many different sizes. I'm not going to get into all the optimizations, but let's just assume this is a really long string here. And we might end up passing this string into a function. Let's go ahead and just call this print string. And it's going to take in a string. Uh, let's just go ahead and call this whatever the parameter is. And we'll just immediately write this out. And then let's just go ahead and run this here. So print string s. And we can see that this works here. So G++, I don't need anything uh, special at this point regarding uh, compilation flags or debug or anything. But I can run this and we get a really, really long string. Now, if you've been following this series for a while, what you should recall is that, well, since we're not modifying this string, we could actually do some improvements here. Because we are passing this in by copy or pass by value, sometimes called pass by copy value or so on. So that means that when I create this string here, I'm making a copy of it. So the copy constructor is involved for this string. Whenever I call this function here, it gets its own copy. So again, if I modify this string, so let's just go ahead and review that uh, very briefly here. Let's just go ahead and we'll use the uh, overload here. So let's just go ahead and add uh, some more uh, text here. And this is uh, the param. 
just to again show you that when I run this, right, even if I modify this string, I'm modifying the copy. So thus another allocation was being made. And then I'm actually uh, printing out the copy of that string but my original string here is its own piece of memory. Okay, we've learned about that in this series. I think that's a refresher for most folks. Now, if we aren't modifying this string, however, then we learned about this ability in C++ to pass by reference. Okay, so we might actually pass by reference here. And again, if we're not modifying anything, then we do const. So go ahead and run this here. And again, we'll see it works just the same here, you know, printing out our string both times. I'll go ahead and get rid of this other one here. But that's the idea. And as far as this goes, we're happier at this point because we're passing by reference. So this is avoiding a copy here in the sense of every time that we call this function, we are referring to the original string here. But again, if we have truly read only data here, then can we still do better? Meaning that, well, this is a read only string here. So really what I want to be able to do is just be able to say something like this, const char star, and then just have some string. Again, that works here. Now, again, as we sort of dive into this, the question is, is this actually allocating here? And in order to find out this answer, I'm going to have to bring in another tool that I like using, which is Compiler Explorer that we've learned in this series a little bit. So let's go ahead and bring in this window here. I've copy and pasted in the code here. Let me make it a little bit bigger so you can actually see it here. And let's try to figure out if this is in fact allocating. Now, I'm not expecting you to be an assembly uh, reader in this series, but uh, the idea is let's just go ahead and look through the assembly code here and see if we see the word allocation. OK, so what I'm going to go ahead and do is just scroll through here and I'm just going to kind of look and look and look. Uh, and I, I have an idea of where it is, but um, oh, I see there's some stuff going on here with basic strings. So that's kind of a hint. And again, the colors that are sort of uh, matching here as I get into print screen, you'll see it kind of highlighting here. So something with basic string, another thing with basic string. Let's go ahead and see what these calls are. And voila, looks like I am in fact doing some allocation here. So here's the allocator. Uh, and specifically, it looks like I'm maybe building a string here. Uh, and then I've got my destructor uh, over here as well. So it looks like we are doing some uh, allocation here. And what's actually happening is that, well, this const char star here, and let's try to look at it uh, in CPP reference again. So let me go ahead and open this up. And I'll go ahead and open up string here. And I'll have to kind of look through here and see, is there a constructor for, that takes in a const char star and just allocates that string because that's uh, exactly what it would be doing here. So if I go ahead, let's go ahead and look at the constructors. And if we look through this entire list, well, let's just kind of search for const. Um, and we might have to search around a little bit here, but it looks like const uh, char t star. And that is exactly uh, a constructor that could be called to construct our basic string. Okay, so that's the idea here. So uh, what I'm saying here, just to clarify, is even though we've allocated this const char star uh, string here, and when I pass it in here, we're still constructing a string. So we're still doing an allocation. And our goal, again, is to get away with that. So how can we get away with a constructor? Well, the short answer here, and I'll go ahead and show you in Compiler Explorer so that we can actually see if this goes away. And I want to just, again, highlight the offending line here where we do this allocation is to use something called a string view. So I'm just going to change this here to string view. And again, string view, what it is, well, let's focus on the word view is it's just giving us a peek into some string, which we know is a uh, char star. OK, so that's what we're really looking into. And we already have this character uh, string here. So what if we could just look into the data and sort of promise that we're not going to change it in a way? And let's go ahead and look in Compiler Explorer. Let's see if there's any change here. So I'll keep looking down, looking down. Uh, and of course, if I highlight over at print screen uh, string here, that's our offending line. Uh, and I'll kind of look here. I'll look here. And hmm, I don't see any allocation called here. OK, so it looks like we're actually saving here on our allocations. And that's great. So we're saving an allocation here, allocation there. Every time we call this function where we just want to print a string, we don't have to make a 
copy and construct an actual string copy from this particular uh, character string here. So that's awesome. And that's the point of this entire video here to use string view when you just need a read only view into a string. So let's go ahead and look at it from CPP reference. And I'll go ahead back to the home page here. And under the strings library, you'll go ahead and see basic string view. And you'll see that this is a uh, C17 feature. So let's go ahead and click on it. And we have various string views here, depending on the type of data that we're working with, meaning a car uh, or char, a wide character, and so on. Uh, so most of the time, you're just going to be using string view. And you can just include this either directly in string view or within string. It'll be defined. Um, and let's go ahead and uh, click on string view here. And again, you can see it's part of the uh, strings library here. OK, now the operations that we have for our string view are for, again, viewing our string. So if we're just looking through some of the members, uh, we have things like getting the size, checking if it's empty, uh, obtaining the pointer to the data, which for a string would actually be that uh, character uh, pointer. OK, so that's sort of what a string view is. Or rather, I should say that's sort of the common implementation. OK, and you can actually look at the basic string view, uh, or in other words, just string view here, and see that the implementation just holds two members, a pointer to a constant char t and a size here. OK, so going back to our illustration, if I have my class uh, string view, and again, you know, you might write this as um, basic underscore string view and then create a specialization for a char, like if you're uh, writing a library. But all this has here, and I'm just going to kind of write this um, uh, as simply as possible. So we'll have a const char star to our underlying data. And then we'll have probably something like size t for the length, OK? And that's it here. Uh, so we don't need to allocate. I don't need to do new or delete, because all I'm doing is pointing to some other data that exists, whether that's in a string or a const char star, because that's all I'm doing when I'm creating or using a string view. I'm just using the uh, pointer to the data, and then I have a length, so I know how long is that actual uh, string of characters. So it might be interesting if you just want to play around with this, for instance, um, Let's go ahead and just do a quick uh, little experiment here. Um, and I always like to kind of show students uh, some of these things. Like if we take the size of the actual data structure. Um, so let's actually just uh, create some string here, s. Uh, and I'll assign it to you know something here. And I'll go ahead and create a string view, s view. Um, and I'll go ahead and um, construct it from uh, s, I guess, here. And let's just go ahead and take a look at the size of S and put an end line here. And let's just go ahead and give ourselves a little label here. So string. And let's repeat for string view. Just so we can see the size of these data structures here uh, for what's actually going on. And let's go ahead and compile this. Now it's saying OK, string view is not a member of standard. And it's actually given us a warning that from C++ 17 onward, um, we have to include this. OK, now in Compiler Explorer, I got away with it because this is using the latest version of Clang. Again, depending on your compiler, you might need uh, to set your default. So let's do at least C++ 17. And um, oh, now I just have a name conflict. So let's just go ahead and call this. Um, str for short. And go ahead and set this up. There we are. And I'll go ahead and do a compile. All right. And let's go ahead and give this a run. And you can see our string, even in terms of the size of the data structure, is uh, 32 bytes here versus 16. Again, this is a probably a long for holding the 8 bytes for the size of the string and the 8 byte pointer. OK, so it's relatively small here. Now, let's go ahead and correct our example here so that we use string view. And because this is a relatively small data structure here, 16 bytes, um, most of the time what I see folks do with string view is just pass in the uh, string view like this. 
um, meaning they're not as concerned since it's a small data type um, with passing it in by reference. That's probably something you can benchmark a little bit on your own or depending on your use case, might need to do a little bit more experiments on. But again, this is typically what I've seen folks do because again, it's only uh, 16 bytes and this has to do with whether you're, um, you know, filling registers and these types of things um, that you have to uh, think about. Alrighty, so with that said, folks, I'll go ahead and leave it here so you now know about string view. It's a way that you can optimize your code, reduce allocations. And again, this becomes really, really important when you have lots of strings here, especially if they're strings of large length and you just need to be able to read that string. So folks, with that said, I'm going to go ahead and upload this lesson. And just as an FYI, something that's new um, and that you might or might not be aware of is uh, I have recently just published the C++ programming language course here, which is all these lessons that you see, whether you've been watching them on YouTube, uh, but you can go ahead and track your progress if you would like to go ahead and be able to do that in a convenient location, as well as there's discussions here or on the comments, again, regardless of where you are watching this video. So I hope you'll find that useful. I just thought I'd share that because it's a fun thing that uh, I've been working on for a little while now. All right, folks, hope you enjoyed that lesson on string view and are enjoying learning a little bit about the standard template library. If you have any questions or comments or have seen some interesting use cases, or maybe you have some actual performance benchmarks of using string view of how it improved your code, please feel free to engage in the discussion and I'll look forward to seeing that. And as always, thank you for your time and attention and I'll look forward to seeing you in the next video.